All right, so this is lecture 13. So we are going to learn today about um, how to manage specific type of municipal waste, mostly food waste. Okay, um, so we'll discuss a little bit about technology that could uh, produce energy using this food waste or any kind of organic waste uh, for that matter. Um, but uh, the first half we'll discuss a little bit about that, but second half we'll I'll open that for um, midterms, questions, any question you may have. Uh, we already discussed in one class as a review one week ago, so at least you have some ideas, but um, I'll just discuss more about what are the things you could do in during midterms that will help you um, do well. Um, again, project outline, uh, any questions? I see somebody. Okay, so um, project outline draft, uh, meet with me anytime um, if you need to help, need help. Um, I, I continue to meet. I directly give feedback during meetings for the, uh, for the outline because uh, the outline is pretty flexible as long as you are comfortable. I just don't want you to work or uh, commit a lot. That's why my main goal in outline is to remove materials so that you can focus on few things so that you are not overwhelmed when you write the draft. Um, so it's really not a, a hard uh, feedback, um, but you can meet as many times with me uh, during for your um, project. Office hour again, Monday two to three. Uh, we'll discuss about midterms. I is supposed to release after this class, but I have many requests student, um, students wanted to, could not take exams uh, today or tomorrow, uh, partly because of the uh, either they have a lot of things tomorrow or as well as uh, the weather condition is affecting their um, living condition. So they are not sure if they will have power. So that's why I increase that to 48 hours. Uh, what it means that you still have that three hours to take the exam, but it's just, you can submit uh, any flexible time. Not only that, there is no next, no class next, uh, next Thursday. Um, the reason is, um, Usually if you think this class, you know, we we take this class uh, in person class and that's the time you take midterms in class itself. Uh, so you normally don't have a class uh, where you uh, you'll uh, have lectures. Uh, so in that context also, I, I um, wanted to make sure that dedicated two hours, you have a new assign yourself. You can take exam during that time next Thursday, uh, coming Thursday, uh, which is the uh, day after tomorrow. Um, um, so the um, due dates to uh, submit your midterms is Thursday midnight. So you have to take before that. And once you open the exam, you have three hours to answer the exams. And you don't need to have download the exam copy and write on top of it. You can do that on your separate piece of paper. You just write question one, two, three. I never expect that you should write on the, on the exam sheet itself. The reason I provide the exam seat is because many students do use iPad or uh, tablet. So for them, it is easier. So that's why I already created the template. And also this is the format I use it for the regular class where I print it out. Uh, so that doesn't mean that I want you guys to use that, um, that seat. So use your, use your own um, plain paper. And it doesn't, so um, it can be ruled paper. The, the uh, one thing I want to suggest is when you use ruled paper uh, or the line on it, use, don't use your pencil because when you take a scan, it's very hard to see. The scanner itself uh, focus on the lines, not on your text. Uh, so if you use a line paper, make sure you write on a piece, ball pen so that your uh, letters are distinct. Just see, uh, just submit a legible copy. You know, if you see that you can't see those, you know, after scanning, then it's harder for us to see too. Um, I'll discuss more exams, but just know that this is 48 hours. And if it doesn't, doesn't mean that you have to take within 48 hours. If you have uh, health reasons or any other reasons that uh, prevent you take the exams within 48 hours, just send me email. And that way for you specifically, I'll, I'll uh, change the, uh, date of submissions to either on Friday 
uh, the day that you you will have uh, let's say power okay so that's all for the exams and uh, for the um, learning objective we are going to discuss more about how do you create energy from food waste we learned a little bit about um, landfill last week and we are going to learn a little bit more about that how you can design landfill so that you can produce energy so and then we uh, we we are going to discuss about anaerobic digester which is mostly um, this is portable scale this is our city scale the reason i say is that the waste that produced by entire city or uh, can be disposed into a landfill whereas anaerobic digester is a you can design in the back of your trailer or even uh, it can be big but it's uh, it's not necessarily mean to receive waste from a large amount um, so that way you have both technology are similar you know the process behind both to produce energy is same so the idea here is that you have food uh, waste or i would say that organic waste then you have the reactor then you produce methane methane gas and those methane gas will be um, and then you produce co2 and energy okay so you basically burn the methane gas as opposed to biomass and then you have also biofuel so sometimes you have also liquid uh, not just gas uh, that could be also as energy or liquid and then you ha also have some um, some sludge the advantage of um, and this is a anaerobic process anaerobic process means no oxygen and the advantage of this one uh, any anaerobic process is it produce very less amount of sludge um, because you know the producing energy or methane you see the carbon is going as a um, methane gas is very energy it's just not uh, efficient process so bacteria normally do not grow a lot biomass whereas if you do aerobic process where oxygen can be used and the bacteria can get lots of energy and then they grow much more faster so they consume this organic faster but they also grow a lot so that means you produce this sludge which has a lot of dead biomass so the advantage of this is the sludge amount is less. That means you are creating less solid waste to manage at the end. You are producing, converting most of the carbon to carbon dioxide uh, or methane, uh, which can be used as energy. So this is the common uh, processes for any of the reactions that you are going to use uh, for both landfill as well as anaerobic digester. So we learned that process in the first half. So this is we call waste of energy technology. You know, this is again just overview. I'm not going through details about it. Uh, but if this is your project, you should read more than what is uh, going to be covered here. So uh, think of another way. Landfills are resource recovery center. Uh, we dump all our waste, but those waste has value. Uh, so most of the landfill technology now can actually produce energy and, uh, and become energy positive. That means the, uh, it, the net operation doesn't require energy. They are in fact supply energy. So this is the idea here. You can see as long as you have a landfill here, this is the landfill. Um, you um, put all this waste and then you produce the methane gas and then you, not just methane, there are many other gas. Okay, so uh, methane, carbon dioxide, uh, ammonia, hydrogen sulfide, there are so many. And you don't want to have all of them um, in the gaseous state. So that's why you have to filter methane gas from the rest of them. So you have a gra gas scrubber. What it does, it, it uh, uh, filter everything. 
except next set methan the key is um, like i said it has carbon dioxide hydrogen sulfide you don't want to have those so now once you have methane here uh, so you have you produce your methane co2 hydrogen sulfide ammonia all these gas can be produced okay there are many other uh, I'll just give you a list here and so um, you cannot produce energy from all of them you can burn methane gas now carbon dioxide there is no you can carbon dioxide is the most oxidized form so nothing can go beyond that um, hydrogen sulfide all that so that's why you have to remove them so that's the scrubber you have so now you have methane gas and you use a compressor to store the methane gas because a gas so you you can't you know use as a entire you have to burn control way so that's why you pressurize them and uh, put in a compressor and then you supply that methane gas with time to produce the energy that needed the reason um, methane gas system is much effective is because it's like a battery to burn methane gas it takes instant yes you don't really have to continue um, um, burning things like thermal power plant when you are using coal or any other things you have to continue to burn uh, you cannot just start like you know on a switch you know it takes a lot of energy to start and and uh, run the system whereas methane gas you know like any gas you have found like inside your home you know, imagine you are doing barbecue you have got to heat up the charcoal and all that whereas if you do barbecue on a gas you just heat it on this right right there you know temperature it doesn't require a lot more so that's exactly it's very efficient so it's more like a battery it stores the energy in a gaseous form and so that's why this is a very attractive technology and uh, and uh, you can use that for all this waste so let's see how it is designed as i said um any reaction that produce energy most uh, methane gas is an anaerobic reaction mostly that means you have to drive the oxygen out of the system and the way you do it is you you pack the Uh, organics food waste and when you are packing it you have so much organic that most of the oxygen will be used up very quickly so you don't have to really take oxygen out it by nature it just uh, remove it and so that means if you just leave it there the the, the food waste has a bacteria so they will grow uh, so anaerobic bacteria will uh, will survive longer uh, in that condition with that oxygen so that means they will naturally going to create methane gas so if you just dump it everything you will create methane gas but now question is how do you accelerate that methane gas production so due to that uh, you know that uh, sometimes it require a little bit energy uh, sometimes it also require a little bit moisture like every reaction require water so you got to have a optimum amount of water and most of the time it's around 30% water 30 to 35% and most of the food waste that you create has enough water so you don't need uh, enough what extra water but in case you do for a mixed waste you have to supply that water so that's you see this pipes are as basically applying the water if you see that um, blue color line and uh, these are water uh, or liquid that is added and it's not just water uh, uh, like any reactions or any uh, aerobic or anaerobic reactions you need also other other nutrients so a lot of time this liquid addition means this is a this is a water plus nutrients all you have is carbon there you still have to supply nitrogen phosphorus all those uh, elements so you apply those uh, mix them and let it percolate um, and then uh, that's how it produce the um, methane gas and then you have to have a system collection system to capture methane gas and um, and basically uh, use this compression in all the system that we discussed so the key here to understand is the moisture content so you have to monitor moisture content and supply the enough nutrients so that you produce the methane gas and then you have leachate collection system for every landfill that's required and that leachate collection system allow because you are applying water so you will have leachate you don't want them to go to ground water so these are ground water um, so this is the design for aerob anaerobic bioreactors so the key here is energy Okay, so you are designing this energy is the is main goal. 
of anaerobic bioreactor. So that means they receive all this kind of food waste. But if you go to the second kind, which is aerobic reactor, their goal is not to produce energy. Their goal is to uh, convert those organics into uh, nothing so that you can reuse that land very quickly. So your goal is to destroy the waste as quickly as possible so that you can, um, in this case, the land is expensive. So you wanted to destroy the waste so that you can produce more, you can fill more, um, you can reuse it. Uh, so aerobic process is much more uh, efficient or it, it destroy the carbon faster and produce carbon dioxide. Um, so that's, uh, that's the idea here. Again, there is no energy here. So this is more about waste reductions. So that means low volume, you can affect more materials. So this is energy positive, energy negative system or energy positive means you are, you are adding more energy. Energy negative means it doesn't require, it supplies energy to outside. And then you have also a combination of system. The idea here is that because you need energy to, to reduce the waste, because uh, you have to supply water and all that. So what the idea here is that you produce energy in half of the waste and then use that energy to uh, do other operations around it. Uh, so you can have a mixed system like this, but the concept is very similar. And then uh, one thing I didn't mention is if you see the bioreactor I talk about here, um, your organic is always carbon, um, hydrogen, oxygen, nitrogen. So this is your organic compositions. So you can see it's carbon, hydrogen, it produce methane, okay? Uh, carbon, oxygen, it produce CO2. What about nitrogen? That nitrogen is you need, uh, it's always there in our body. You know, if you think of DNA everywhere, there are nitrogen. So what happened to those nitrogen? That produce ammonia gas, okay? And ammonia gas is very toxic. If it's toxic, it can slow down all the systems. And so um, that's why, you know, this is uh, one of the issues is how to deal with this ammonia gas. Uh, so the idea here is that this ammonia gas can um, become nitrate uh, if you oxidize it, if you add oxygen, um, it become nitrate and this nitrate can be used uh, uh, you know, when there is no oxygen because nitrate is as um, energetic as oxygen, a little bit less than oxygen, but it's the next redox ladder. So bacteria can utilize nitrates as electron acceptors like they do for oxygen. So that's the whole idea of this technology. Facultative bioreactors means it, uh, it basically do nitrifications. It um, all the nitrate or uh, gas produce, it uh, it convert to nitrate, and then nitrate can be used by bacteria to produce like similar as oxygen. Okay, nitrate in place of O2 because O2 is very difficult to find there, so you don't have to supply O2. So that's the uh, they use nitrate as electron abstractors and then, then they produce nitrogen gas. Nitrogen gas is benign. Okay, so that's the whole idea of here. So at what condition you can do? Well, this is, you know, it depends on what kind of food and what you produce. And this can be used to actually use fertilizers because you can, if you can use ammonia gas, you can, you can change the pH uh, to produce ammonium and then you can precipitate and use as a, um, nitrogen fertilizer. So there are multiple different way of uh, using this as a, um, for, uh, as a resource. Uh, so there are, again, we are not going details. So if you, if you're working on this particular topic, you can, you can send me email, then we can discuss more on that. Just know that this is the concept. Uh, so any question on landfill before you go to anaerobic digester, which is a small scale of landfill? Right, you can put on the chat window if you have any question anytime. So I'll answer that. All right, so uh, what we learn is anaerobic reactors, um, which is basically anaerobic digester. It's basically the, all the foods are being digested by anaerobic bacteria or microorganisms. So um, 
we and if you want to know more about it you should uh, read again as you notice there is no handout the reason is all the links are handout so if you go to the zpa website you'll learn more about anaerobic digester if this is part of your project you'll, you'll learn a lot from these links okay so what is anaerobic digester um, again the idea is the same as landfill where you use natural process uh, um, to break down the organic materials to methane gas um, but the idea here anaerobic means there is no oxygen. Uh, how often, there are questions, how often are new landfills being produced in the US? Where are they located? Uh, well, um, landfill is cheap in US compared to Europe. Europe, you can produce new, create new landfill. And most of the landfills are uh, near the big cities. That's where the demands are. Um, um, so uh, it's not you know, the amount of landfill we already have is going to go for many years. So it's very rare that you make new landfill. Um, so I would say that it's, very, you know, particularly in the US, in Los Angeles, for instance, there are many landfills because it's a 10 million people, right, in LA County. Um, so um, it's not produced a new, new you are not creating new landfills. What you are doing is you are, you are actually managing this waste in different way now. Um, they are more being conscious about how to divert the waste for different applications. Uh, for instance, right now, what to do with all this plastic waste? We don't know. Right now, it's all going to landfill. So the large volume of those is um, just from plastics and paper waste. Once we design certain other system, then we can reduce that volume. So I, I don't I don't have a you know short answer. How often? Um, you, I frankly I don't know even. Uh, but I, all I know is that it's not, um, it's not um, that frequent because once you create a landfill, it, uh, it's, it can receive waste for 60, 70 years, uh, most of the locations. And uh, where they're located, you can search, you know, and you can find in big cities or near the big cities, most of the landfills are. And stay away, it is away from the community because you don't want to be living near landfill. Um, all right, so the type of anaerobic digestion system, the feedstock or the materials that you use are organic waste. So that's why it could be an animal manures, it could be food scrap, most of the food waste, fat, oil, grease, you know, these are things you can get from uh, when you change your, uh, uh, change your um, uh, oil in your car, those goes there. Also the fried oils, uh, stuff like that, you know or industrial organic residues. Um, Swiss sludge is another thing, biosolid. Roughly 20 or 30% of the sludge that produce, sludge that produce in wastewater is applied as a go to landfill. Uh, most, more than 51% goes to, goes to land applications as a uh, fertilizers. Uh, so there are still 31% is a lot. Now if you think of millions and millions of tons. So again, basic concept or of anaerobic digester is that you, uh, the microorganism break down the, the complex organics to form methane gas, carbon dioxide, and ammonia. Um, so again, just, as I said, this is just a, just a generic formula for any organics. You can break it down to CHON, number of nitrogen. These are the number of uh, nitrogen, C is the number of oxygen, number of hydrogen number of carbon. So if you substitute in this equation, you'll be able to um, calculate uh, or balance these uh, equations if you know the any equations on that. For instance, you have a, a D number of nitrogen, so that's why you have D number of pneumonia you produce from that. Uh, so this is just a generic formula. You can apply that if you, as long as you know the these equations. So this is why I gave you example here your, uh, this is the organic. So number of carbon is six, number of hydrogen is 12, number of oxygen is six. So that's exactly uh, A, B, C. There is no D, D equal to zero. So that means there is no ammonia gas. So if you substitute those, you can get these equations. But you don't have to, if you have a smaller formula, you can actually balance it by itself like we learned before. So, um, but either way, the why it is important. 
it is important because it will tell you how much methane gas you can produce. So for instance here, if you see C6H12O6, six, six, there are six carbon. So the three of the carbon is becoming methane and three of the carbon becoming carbon dioxide. So this is critical to understand because you know that's uh, that basically says how much energy capacity of that production system. So any questions you can, this could be a small quiz questions. Uh, just know that you know, how much methane will be produced if you if you give you the uh, formula. Now it's about mechanism. What what happens once you put all this food waste? So think of this way: the very starting point is the food, which is very complex, and very um, all the organics are complex. All the foods, because that's what the plants and other things produce. It takes multiple reactions to form that complex organic, uh, which we are all made up of. Now, when it decomposes, it doesn't produce methane immediately. There are many small steps. They have to break it down to smaller and smaller molecules um, before that becomes methane gas or carbon dioxide gas. So as you see over here, um, so complex organic, carbohydrate, protein, fats, all that stuff, break it down to soluble organic molecules because uh, uh, bacteria cannot use anything which is not soluble because that's how they break, do inter intracellular reactions. So some types of microorganisms, they produce, um, they, they use acid, they produce the, the protons or hydrolysis where the, the, the organic itself will break down in acidic environment to produce soluble organic molecules, which is, can be sugar, which can be an amino acid or fatty acid. So you have two choices here, either it's amino acid or alcohols or fatty acid. So this is sugar amino acid on the left side, right side is alcohol and fatty acid. So now all of them, can break down further to produce volatile fatty acid, which is even smaller. Okay, and some of them can directly also break down to produce acetic acid. Acetic acid, if you see what's the formula, it's a CS3COOH. And it's key because if you think of what is methane, methane is CH4. So all you have to do is break this one and produce methane. Okay, so this is like the next closest form of methane gas. So that's why it is written as acetic acid because that's, uh, or acetate, that's the one step away from uh, from producing methane gas. So the next reaction is all about that removing that acidic functional group, then you become uh, methane, it become methane gas. Um, so then other form is you can produce hydrogen gas, which is here. And those hydrogen gas can be combined with uh, carbon dioxide to produce also methane gas. Okay, uh, so hydrogen will go to um, CH4. We have obviously carbon, carbon dioxide. <clears throat> so these are the different formula. So that's the point is, the main point over here is that you cannot produce methane gas immediately. There are many, uh, different step of reactions. That means when you design this reactor, you have to account for all these diverse microorganisms. You cannot just say that, okay, let me put this microorganism, they will produce methane. That doesn't work. Every step is done by a certain group of microorganisms. So those are written here. Um, as you see, this, this shows exactly what kind of bacteria there uh, is required for each step. So um, this just to just to know that uh, that's the whole idea. And this is just to give you some redox reaction that says, uh, what's the end product? How you produce smaller and smaller. You have a large molecule over here. Uh, you see one, two, three carbons, one, two, three carbons, or four carbon, it becomes uh, two carbon. So you break it down to smaller and smaller molecule uh, to form the acetate. Acetate, which is the precursor to form the methane. Um, so that's, these are the different processes. And again, this reaction is a first order reaction. I don't have to mention this, it keeps coming in what we know how to use reactors, all those things before. So if you have a reactions, how quickly the substrate or the food is decayed is a function of that KD, or the reaction first order decay rate, 
And if you know this one, you can predict how much food you can consume or you can digest in a uh, in reactors. But many reactors are not batch reactor. Batch reactor means you put all the food, you mix them, all the energy produced, then you dump outside. But many of the react that's not a very efficient system. Uh, what is really efficient system is when you have a continuous mix as well as the flow through system. Because you have the food waste, you can just dump into continuously. Another side, you produce the uh, methane gas and other product. So when you have those kind of, um, uh, the Q is the flow rate of the food waste. Uh, this is where you can, you can use the, um, use the, the reactor, um, basically um, this mass balance equation. So this is everything coming in. This is what is leaving the system. And this is what is reactions reacted. So when you combine them, it will give you how much time it takes for, for the food waste to degrade. Um, or, or how much uh, hydraulic residence time, how long the food waste remain in the systems. Um, so again, these are the mathematical equations you are not going to use. There is no mid, after midterms, there is nothing there. But if you are using this kind of system, you can calculate using this. Uh, if you know the KD value, you know how much food waste you have received and how much food the sludge you produce or the um, remaining amount. You can you can calculate the residence time, how long uh, it takes to, to treat entire food. So now that we learned the basic process, let's watch a couple of videos so that you see how it works because we already covered everything that I said. So there are, um, you know, there are different videos that shows uh, how it works. This is basically mechanism related. Uh, so it shows that how they break it down to smaller molecules. This one more about if you have liquid organics, waste like oils and all that stuff, how you can produce them. This is just example. And this is a solid waste. What if you have a sludge, like uh, let's say you have a organic uh, biosolid or compost or leaves. Now, how do you how do you produce anaerobic reactions in the solid waste? And this is just to show that a low cost methods uh, develop in a developing country so that uh, people can do it in the uh, small scale. The last one, this video, I want to show you this particular one um, that um, this is a this is particularly the state where I'm from, uh, uh, state of Odisha in in India. Uh, there is a big um, big school which is a which is basically free for any any students who are uh, from um, economically disadvantaged place. So they don't their parents cannot afford school. So they give free educations and the 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 foods and all that are free. Uh, so what they do is they because they love, thousands and thousands of students, they cook all these meals. Uh, so all these waste goes to producing the energy that uh, cook their food. So it's kind of a sustainable way. Uh, so let me show you that couple of videos so that you can see them. Uh, so let me stop share. And share the video. Let's see. Dalma will contain approximately 2,500 kilos of pulse grains and 2,400 kilos of vegetables like pumpkin. In the small vessels, we put about 100 kilograms of rice. It is ready in seven to eight minutes. Similarly, in the larger vessels, we are putting roughly about 150 kilograms of lentil with vegetables another 200 kilograms. It is ready in almost 17 to 19 minutes, depending on the type of vegetables we are putting. By mid-morning, the cook has progressed rapidly and the finish line is in plain sight. Now, it's been 2500 kilos of rice. Where the rice is about 38 quintal, and about 60 quintal, it's about 700 kilos. It's about 11 to 15 kilos, it's about 11 to 15 kilos. It's a good thing the kitchen is on track because outside the dining hall, thousands of children are already lining up.
Student volunteers, too, are at their stations. It's their job to ferry trolleys and cook food, which will be poured into smaller pails for distribution inside the dining hall. Which at more than 24,000 square feet could fit a small colony of more than 25 two-bedroom houses in one space. But even this much space is not enough to accommodate over 25,000 children. Half of it is for seating the boys and half of it is for seating the girls. That is in batch sizes of 8,000, three to four batches, we complete the 25,000 meals. It takes about one hour, 40 minutes to two hours to complete the. So that basically shows that um, uh, what I didn't show there is uh, the the amount of you know, when they produce this is a entire uh, two hours or one hour documentary where um, all the raw vegetables when they the peeled um, vegetables and all that uh, the food waste goes to anaerobic digesters and then they produce energy and they, its entire school has solar uh, panel so the most of the operation is designed by the energy produced at the site itself. So as you can see, this, this uh, food technology is very impressive when, you, when it comes to uh, different types of um, applications. So this is another one video. Um, it's a two minute video, so I want to show you again. Organic waste processing facilities designed by Zero Waste Energy, ZWE, take organic materials such as food and yard waste and convert them into biogas, which can be used to generate either power or CNG vehicle fuel. The process also produces a highly marketable compost product. These facilities reduce the amount of organic waste introduced into landfills, which in turn reduces the amount of methane gas being released into the atmosphere. CWE facilities feature state-of-the-art dry anaerobic digestion systems, specially designed to recover organic waste streams energy content in the form of biogas, which is a mixture of biomethane and carbon dioxide. The dry anaerobic digestion system is in a fully enclosed and negatively aerated facility to control odor. Organic waste first enters the facility via the receiving bay, where it will be inspected for contaminants. The organic waste is then tipped on the floor where it will be classified and temporarily stored prior to processing. This anaerobic digestion facility can be designed to process as little as 5,000 tons per year of organic waste up to unlimited volumes. The loading of waste is a simple process of stacking material with a front end loader. Following material loading, air is supplied to the waste material through an in-floor aeration system. The additional oxygen supplied by the air system rapidly and evenly heats the material to process temperatures of 125 to 131 degrees Fahrenheit through an aerobic decomposition process. Exhaust air from the aerobic heating is treated in a biofilter to remove odor. The next step in the anaerobic digestion process is called fermentation, which consists of spraying a liquid biological inoculant or percolate on the organic waste material. Percolate contains all of the microorganisms necessary to digest the material and produce a high quality biogas. This is typically stored in a below ground tank. The fermentation period lasts about 20 days. The production of biogas can begin within six hours of percolation. Biogas from each digester is captured and piped to a below ground percolate tank where it is mixed to create a consistent methane content. Biogas is then piped to storage. Following the fermentation phase, the spraying of percolate is stopped and the termination phase begins. Biogas continues to be captured until the methane content reaches a predefined limit, after which air is supplied through the in-floor aeration system to rapidly purge the digester of lean biogas and establish safe conditions for the removal of digestate. Once safe conditions have been established within the digester, the material is removed and placed in a settling bay to ensure maximum odor control prior to removing the material from the facility. Digestate can be further processed to create a high quality marketable compost that meets or exceeds federal and state agricultural standards. That's just a solid one that you see. And then the, this one is a, let me see this. It's the chemistry. Let's see another one. Um. Shanks Auger World Business gives the group unique access to anaerobic digestion, or AD, and composting expertise. 
AD is the conversion of organic waste, such as waste food, into biogas and digestate, a technology used by Auger World for more than 10 years. But how does yesterday's spaghetti become tomorrow's renewable energy? Firstly, all packaging is removed and sent for use in energy generation in place of fossil fuels. This ability to de-package food waste creates a competitive advantage as it makes life easier for customers like retailers and local authorities. The organic material is then blended into a liquid and transferred to storage tanks. These liquids are in effect the raw ingredients for the AD recipe. A mix of the liquid is then sent to the digester, which is an oxygen-free environment, hence the term anaerobic. Shank's experience means they're able to optimize the blend, maximizing the amount of biogas produced. The liquid in the digester is heated to 30 to 35 degrees and mixed with paddles to avoid separation. During its 30 or so days in the digester, microbes digest the organic fraction within the liquid and release methane-rich biogas. This gas and the processed liquid, called digestate, are then extracted and sent for further treatment. The biogas gets used in a variety of different ways. It can be upgraded to vehicle fuel or injected directly back into the gas grid. But typically, Shanks combusts the biogas to generate renewable energy which is sold to the national grid. This energy attracts renewable obligation certificates, known as ROCs. The digestate is then treated to separate the solids from the liquid. The liquid is cleaned and discharged back to the sewer and the solid is recycled back to agricultural land as fertilizer. This reduces the need for expensive inorganic nitrogen and replaces phosphorus, which comes from a non-renewable source, so nothing goes to waste. Legislative and fiscal drivers mean that AD is an increasingly attractive sustainable solution for private companies or local authorities wishing to meet their environment. Right, so that's all in terms of the videos, but I have another videos over here. I'm not gonna show it, uh, it's five minutes. And we already discussed about how the anaerobic digester work. It just basically show you the 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 conditions like you know what this is just a biomass. Uh, and then it it reacts with oxygen and produce carbon dioxide if you have aerobic. Um, so you talk about different stuff that can come, and then it shows the actual mechanism, uh, like how nitrate is produced and the, how nitrate bacteria can use it up to produce nitrate and ammonia or nitrogen dioxide or uh, gas and what's the pH and all that effect. So we talk about anaerobic versus anaerobic, aerobic versus anoxic, you know, no oxygen, all that stuff, why it is important. Uh, so basically everything I discussed, it's already shows in a visual way. Uh, so you should see that one. And um, so any questions, these are just the basic informations. And now I'm going to um, get to the slides where we discuss about some of the extra examples. Let's see, Let's see, start to share the screen. Okay, so I share the screen. Okay, so these are all videos that we watched. Um, now, the, the main point is why we are going to use anaerobic digester. Uh, the, the first goal is uh, getting energy. And the, the second most important goal that often not mentioned is the amount of sludge you produce. As you see, you know, if you aerobic react or any reaction, it produces lots of sludge, uh, which, is, which is why the wastewater treatment plants produce this biosolid. And those biosolids can be toxic or it's it's a waste. Um, so that then you have to use landfill. Whereas if you use anaerobic reactor, you can directly produce methane gas. And methane gas is 25 or more times than more potent than carbon dioxide. That's why it's important not to release them to atmosphere. A lot of time carbon dioxide gets all the negative publicity, but it's the methane that is the, um, the, the cause of um, a lot of issues. Uh, so that's why you know, it's important to actually capture the methane and produce that energy and turn it to carbon dioxide because ultimately we're releasing that carbon dioxide atmosphere. But then also you have carbon dioxide capture technology in future, so those will also help. But most point is anaerobic reaction, we uh, produce very small amount of solid waste. Uh, so that's why it's very important to um, 
to um, to use this technology. Uh, so it's basically zero waste technology. You produce more energy or a less amount of waste. That could be also fertilizer. Um, so there are different types of organic waste you can use. It could be dry organics, uh, which is 50% solid, greater than 50%, which could be biosolid, uh, or it could be wet organics, um, but most of the time you need at least 15% by weight um, organic mixture. Now it comes to design. And you'll have multiple, like another 10, five or six slides, but the concept is same. So the idea here is that you have food waste, food goes to a system, and you have a mixing system, okay? If you do not mix, the reaction is slow. No mixing means it becomes slow process. More mixing is fast process, but it also requires energy, right? So that means you're, you got to have a, a system where you can supply energy, but many places you cannot supply. For instance, septic tank. In a, in a rural area, you don't need to have that mixing system. You can just dump all the food in a big container or in an underground um, tank, and that will automatically produce methane gas. And then you can use that methane gas to, to cook. Uh, so that's how um, the, I say septic tank, but it's not true. No? So you not use your own uh, waste to, you know, you use your uh, either cow manure or you, uh, people use um, the food waste, those kind of waste of the farm waste to produce methane gas to cook uh, because of the idea, the, the, the psychological aspect of using the own human waste. Um, so then basically you have either mixing or no mixing. Mixing means slow, or mix, mixing, mean, uh, mixing means fast, no mixing means slow process. And then whether how the bacteria is added, is this something attached to a system like a, like a porous media? or you have a moving system where the, the bacteria are attached to that, or you have a, a mixing system that itself um, uh, make them grow. So this is the conventional system, no mixing, and then you have attached growth versus dispersed growth. Both of them is just the engineering method, how you mix them together. Other than that, this is the same concept. So next couple of slides, I show you this example. This is the low rate, okay, very slow rate, where you dump everything in one end, and uh, and you the digested stuff settle at the bottoms. You have some foam on the top, and then you produce uh, the your superintendent is a liquid that comes out of the system. Um, and the other one, the high flow or high rate system where you have a mixing. This is the mixing reactor, and then not only that, you require a little bit of energy, so heat energy too, because anaerobic reactor is a, is a very efficient at thirty seven degrees Celsius. Uh, so that's why you see that video, they say they heat it up in between. So this is a heating system over here. And you see that it produces very small amount of sludge here. And then you could have also a combination of both. Okay, so you, you have a first system and then you have a flow system at the end, secondary digester. And then in the high rate design, as I said, you can be a, how you pack them or is this a, a pack bed reactor where you have stuff where bacteria can can grow around it so that you can add influence and the influence or the biogas come from the out sub top surface. The idea you inject here at the influence, not at the top, is because to avoid any oxygen. When you're injecting from the bottom, the, all the oxygen atmosphere things is not coming inside. Uh, so that's why there is an upflow. Upflow to prevent oxygen O2 coming in. Whereas if you apply from the off spray, you know that the air will get in. And then you have a recirculation system where, because if it is not efficient enough, you recirculate the same stuff multiple times uh, so that you treat multiple ways. And this is just a vapor system. Basically things are moving. And so that as it moves, um, sorry. Um, it does um, uh, help the bacteria grow. Um, so these are, again, these are different types of reactors. It's a basically engineering is, a, is some advantage for uh, versus another. So, but other than that, this is just the same concept of mixing. 
so when you discuss about this process in your project, you can think of, if you do reactor, then you think of reactor configurations, think of whether what kind of design you want to have, whether it's going to be fast or it's going to be slow process and that based on where it is, you know, and how efficient you want the system to be um, or how much food waste you are handling per, per day because uh, the reaction rate is not going to change. That depends on temperature. Um, so you just have to, you can make it faster by, by mixing them together so that uh, the bacteria are more efficient. Um, so the design you can think of is hydraulic retention time is the amount of food you can deliver, what temperatures, how big the height of the reactor would be and how much uh, organics you have. Either 15% is minimum, but how much more, you know, all that. Um, so if you need this as a as your projects, just let me know so that I can send you more materials or book chapters on it. Um, but other than that, this is basic things is all you need if you are just uh, learning from this class. And again, um, just I want to highlight the amount of gas you produce is not just methane. You produce carbon dioxide, hydrogen sulfide, ammonia, all that. So just know that this is a uh, this is something misconception that all carbon goes to carbon or methane gas. That's not true. So that's the one concept here. And at the end, um, this is the this is the last slide just to show that how it all works together. You have organic materials produced either domestically or from um, uh, raw materials. And then you put that as digestion system, you break it down to small pieces and then you you, you either produce energy and that energy uh, or biogas, which can uh, uh, use as a fuel for, for bus, uh, engines and all that, and also can produce electricity. And the solid waste you created is actually very small volume and is highly enriched with nutrients. And those nutrients can be applied as a fertilizer uh, to agriculture. And those agriculture waste go back as a raw materials. So it's a circular economy. So nothing is being uh, wasted, everything is being used up. The only thing that remain at the end is carbon dioxide, which go to atmosphere. And those carbon dioxide goes back to the plant, the plant that you use for fertilizers. Uh, so in the entire process can be energy negative, means you're producing energy, as well as you produce zero waste. So that's why you know, there are a lot of emphasis on this process. They are being used in multiple places. Uh, you can apply for multiple, different type of project. Uh, so think of how, what happens to the solid waste and how you can use it. So that's all in terms of the anaerobic digestion system that I plan to discuss today. Uh, so we'll take a 10 minute break and we'll come back. When I come back, we can discuss about um, the any questions about midterms, which will be released again midnight today. And you have 48 hours or longer based on if your situation is different from other. And you, you ideally you can take the exams during the next class, same time, Thursday, um, um, four, four to six o'clock, because any of those times are assigned for you for this class, but you can take before too. And um, we'll discuss all that when we return. Uh, so we have break until five, um, 510, but I will stick around if you have any question on this, or you can ask later if you want to. All right, I'm going to pause. Yes? Oh, I was going to ask you, how common is biogas? Uh, it is produced, uh, there will be always biogas produced in every, any system. So biogas, you know, is this the same as methane? Yes or no, right? So any, any production system who will have methane, right? Uh, but it does produce low vol volatile organic. So those are biogas. So those low volatile organic can be also, um, can be bond to carbon dioxide. I mean like for like commercial use? Oh, commercial use. Hmm. I, I think, you know, that's a good question. I don't know the answer uh, in the sense how you know, if you think of corn oil, okay, corn, they produce methanol, that's commercial, right? So it's, a, so it depends on what's the raw product, how typical, if you take just food waste, you're not producing those. 
you are, you are producing mostly methane gas in landfills. And there are certain wastewater treatment plants, they, they actually receive food waste from you. So for instance, there is a wastewater treatment plant in San Francisco, they actually take food waste from restaurants because the wastewater doesn't have enough organic. You see 15% is a lot. 15% by weight is like, uh, think of how much, 1% um, is one gram in 100 gram of water. That means 10 gram of carbons in 1%, uh, in 10 gram of carbon in one liter of water. 10% means 100 gram of carbon in one liter of water. And one milligram per liter is one ppm. Uh, one gram is 1000 ppm. 100 gram is one million, nearly one million ppm milligram per liter. So it's very high concentration. If you think of BOD, it's COD. It's way, way high. Whereas wastewater BOD, which is like a milligram per liter is less than 100 or, or to maximum, let's say 500 milligram per liter organics. So you don't really have a lot of organics. So you need a tons of them to sustain this. So what they do is they export food waste and then dump into wastewater and produce this energy. Uh, so this can be integrated into uh, existing food management or food waste management system. Okay. All right, so we'll meet again uh, 510 uh, and we, when we return, we'll discuss about exam. All right, so a couple of things for exams. So midterms is, um, uh, is two hour plus one hour. So you have four, three hours, okay. And But the exam, the questions are set for, are set for two hour. Um, so let's say maximum three hours. So you should not need more than that for sure. Um, um, let me see. Uh, so then the second thing is um, it has a question one has 10 um, short and short questions. It's like multiple choice, like multiple choice, but um, the choices are not given. The reason is you got to explain the answers. This idea is that if you even have a wrong answer, if you if you have light logic, you get some partial credit. When I ask multiple choice, if you give the wrong answer, you usually in quiz you lose that point. So that's why you are more flexible here. And so those questions could be could be quantitative quantitative questions. So that means small thought calculations, like you know what's the um, simple questions like, you know, what's the oxidation state of this nitrogen and ammonia? Uh, look at the quiz questions or, or homework questions. And it also, many of the questions are qualitative. Um, so that means, you know, you just have to explain, you know, the trend, you know, why it increases, what it decreases. And some of them are also very open-ended questions, like, you know, how do you address uh, waste? or how do you do all that other aspect? So check all that. And everything that is on the slides will be part of the questions. Not, you don't have to read anything beyond the slides to answer the questions. Um, so that's question one. Question two, uh, three, four. These are long questions related to, very similar to, to homework questions. Um, but it has also multiple parts, okay? So that multiple parts, the idea behind this one is you, even you get one sort part wrong, you know, you can still get the full credit in the second part. And I do not, a um, couple of things I want to say that, uh, um, I do not evaluate for right answers. This particular class or the other classes I teach, I de-emphasize the idea of uh, one right answers. You know, I, 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 I'm more interested in how you think about the questions. 
So even you don't know how to answer a question, if you write your process of thought, you know, what you understood, you I always look for those thinking. And so that means you get partial credit even for writing, you know, the approaching it right. And and also this is also think of you know many engineering problems beyond the classroom. You are not required to find the right answers. If you think of you know any engineering problems in the real world, there is no right answer. You are just going to find the best possible answers and you will have a process, you will follow a process. So this is basically idea of that, you know. So that might take some while for you to used to it because many of the exams that you think of, uh, you are judged for the right answers and, and you get, including in this class for the quiz. Uh, so I, I just want to emphasize this learning process as well, asking questions, thinking of uh, problems and thinking of a different solutions. Um, but many of the, that's why many of the questions are related to homework. So that means if you understand the homework, you can apply the similar concept here and you can approach the same way. So you can write basically if you don't have time to answer a question, you can say that these are given, we are asked to calculate these values. And to do that one, you these are the process will all follow. I'll first do this one, I'll do this one, then I'll do that. So if you write that one, you get partial credit if you don't do the one. So don't leave any blanks, okay? So right approach. This is one thing I check, and also logical thinking. So even if it's a, it's a wrong approach, but as long as you know that may be wrong approach for that questions, but it's a logical thinking for certain problems. So I check on those. So what I'm trying to say is very difficult to score less than eighty percent or uh, in this uh, exams. Uh, the reason is because of uh, that approach. And I expect that you should understand all homework. And so those are one thing I, and then second thing is you will be asked to, plot a graph to show a trend, okay. So it could be basically you have, let's say the simple graph I'm talking about, let's say, um, Q equal to, I'm just throwing a number, okay, Q max, A, C by um, one plus A, C. Okay, A, Q max constants. So I can ask you plot C versus Q. So if you plot C versus Q, it look like this, okay. So by, uh, so you got to have a graphical representation of a formula that is already given to you. So where is the application? That's one question. Basically, if you think of a, the tower questions, the stripping tower questions, you you have that examples. Now you, you, you know the equations you are able to plot in, in homework or at least in the solutions. So you should be able to plot at least one variable. And the reason why it is critical, if you can visualize how things changes as you increase or decrease certain value, you'll be able to design your solutions. So uh, part of these things, you some of these uh, skills are required for your projects or may be helpful. So I test you for that. And um, then another thing I want to um, mention about uh, exam is Again, this class is not about taking midterms or finals or doing good homeworks, all that stuff, you know, uh, which is important that you have to still make an effort. Um, but this is very open-ended class for project-oriented, project-based learning. That means I'm not going to take a lot of points for anything other than uh, you know, because think of homework. Homework is preparing you for the exams, but those exams are has to help you in your project. Uh, so many of those questions are required. You know, it requires certain degree of design thinking. So that's how the questions are decided. That's why you have small, only few number of homework, three homeworks, and two are basically quantitative. One is very simple questions, and then you have also a quiz that gives you conceptual understanding. And then combine them all together. I hope that by end of this class, 
you learn what is waste means, how to manage waste, and you are not afraid to design a system like, let's say, um, a landfill, or at least you know how they operate, basic principle behind it. You'll be able to calculate how fast a contaminant can move in groundwater, or you'll be able to say, if I put this reactive barrier, how much it is going to slow down. And, and you'll be able to say why certain conditions is good for certain reactions. For instance, why pH is helpful for certain things, uh, for certain reactions. So these, I, I keep asking this kind of question during quiz, during exam, uh, during um, homework. And so I think you should have given you enough understanding for, uh, for your project. Uh, so think of this is the last test. After that, it's all about uh, mostly related to project and I'll work with you uh, individually. So that means you will discuss projects and we'll, we'll brainstorm together. You write something, I'll give you feedback. The whole idea is learning through feedback. So you are not losing point by appearing, attending any of those, um, the, the, the project topics, project outline, even from project draft, I give you feedback before you submit the complete draft. Uh, so that means you know you've given a lot of opportunity to learn a lot. So that's my emphasis for this project, this learning class. Uh, so um, you know if you I know that it's a pandemic time, you don't get a chance to talk with your colleague. Uh, so ask any questions about um, uh, anything you ask in campus where before midnight today. I'll answer it whether it's exactly like exams or not doesn't matter. I'll answer them. It will be on the campus where. Uh, so you can use those uh, to discuss. Uh, so, and second thing I want to emphasize is this class, the exam is two forty-eight hours. That doesn't mean that I'm available to answer question every time, you know. So uh, be mindful about it. Don't take exams after five or before nine, or you know, let's say before eight or after uh, six, let's say, you know, because those are the times I am officially active. So that means I'll be able to respond. But if you are, let's say, setting, asking a question at eight o'clock at night, I may may not answer. So, because I may not see that. So just be mindful about that. So take exams within time, but try to take exam within um, um, within the, the normal of this hour. And second thing is um, look at the campus where many students ask questions. So they may be, you, whatever the thoughts you have, may be answered already. So I know that many students do not even check campus where they ask, keep asking the same questions by email. And I, you know, I don't mind to answer, but I know that I will not be answering promptly because I don't check. I get a lot of emails and I always miss emails very easily. So it's your benefit if you ask by campus where. So first check out the questions on campus where. If you feel like all the questions are not answered, then you ask that on. Um, on campus where so that other student can get benefit from your questions. And third thing is that now just write everything, don't leave anything blank. As I said, this is I'm not evaluating for the right answers or wrong answers. I'm looking for right approach. You get most of the full credits because I see how you think, whether this thinking is uh, is helpful for your projects or not. So uh, again, uh, my philosophy is, you know, a lot of time grades are important, but it's very important that you are not pressured for any any kind of judgment so that you use your creativity uh, for learning. So I hope you take advantage of that process and learn a lot more in this class because you don't have to worry about grade as much, you know. And just have, if I give you statistics, very few people get B in this class, uh, partly because of the design of the process. But I don't want to pressure that because you still have to appear the exam and make an effort. Uh, so just I'm just saying that so that you you free up yourself and be creative for your projects and give your best effort for midterms. And this is open book. You can write on your uh, own pace. You have all help accessible, uh, every homework solutions, um, slides, anything. So the only thing that I don't expect you to do is talk to each other. I, there is no way for me to know, but I just say, just no, I know this is effort, your own personal effort. And you have all resources available so far for you to do well. So that's all in terms of the exams and what I thought I'll say. But do you have any question we can discuss now? Even if it's too late, you can also ask in on campus where. 
anything, as I said, any question received before midnight today, I'll respond to those. Um, not before midnight, but at least uh, in the morning, you'll have my answers. And the quiz will, uh, the question will be released midnight today. Uh, so don't take midnight, okay? Because then if you ask question before midnight, I'm not answering those. But you have 48 hours. And but again, if that 48 hours is still not strict, I know that some student requested for health reason as well as um, because of um, power address in their area. And I'm giving them more time. That what does that mean? Is if you send me email that I cannot take exam before Friday or before Thursday midnight, I have to know that. That way I can change the setting so that you tell me when you are planning to take. I'll activate that during that time for you. So that's all difference. That way you can take that exams in that three hour window. Other than that, I think should not be a problem. This is this should be a pretty straightforward midterms, unlike C-153. Okay, I learned my lessons. I'll not give too many questions, which will give you a lot of time to work on it. Um, any question? Okay, I'm going to stop the fair, um, but um, I'll just answer a question if you have. I have a question about um, the radius of influence. Okay. When do you know what, whether to use like the SI units versus the American? Oh, I see. You know, I, I think somebody asked this question and I, in the solution, if, if I made a mistakes, you know, it is, it is always, uh, if it is SI unit, uh, it has a it has a um, the conversion factor is there. Okay, if it is a, just the equation, there is no conversion factor. Uh, it's designed for. It's not about SI unit or not. You know, it's more about all unit has to be same SI unit or not. I think there is a two things people can make mistake. One is the log versus natural log versus log ten. Okay, that's one thing. And second is the SI versus versus the regular unit. Whatever the question is given, use the same consistent unit. So unit should not be a problem because if you are using gallon one or the feet one place, another place has to be feet. Okay. So these things has to cancel out. And um, I think that's, that's the only thing. It doesn't matter which- It doesn't mean. matter, yeah. Because as I said, your right answer is not a factor. As you write approach, you'll get the full credit. So I'm not looking for, if you don't write any unit in the answer, that's the wrong answer, okay? So if you write, okay, what's the volume? And you said 20. I don't know what is that 20 means. You know? Is this 20 feet, 20 gallons? I don't know that. But if you write 20 gallons versus you somebody convert 20 gallons to liters, that's fine. You get the full credit, so you of that. and write all the conversion factors because you, in case you make a mistakes because you forgot something to multiply, but I know that's something you wrote in the equations, you just forgot, you don't lose points for that, okay? Um, so write all the steps at least, you know, just in case you, you forgot to calculate that. That way I know that you are aware of that. Because what is the worst thing that you, you have gallon here and then you write the answer in liters but there is no conversion somewhere. So that means I don't know how you get the answers. You got right somewhere, okay? But if you could write the gallon to liters, but you forgot to multiply using calculator, all that stuff, you don't lose any point because I know you put all the steps. Any other question? So for the, for like the air stripping questions and for like using the graphs, um, can we just use any online like graph, like website, like Desmos or something? Well, I, I gave you the value. So you'll be plotting with those constants. So that means you, you got to create those graph. Or is this the question? I, I... Um, like, like, should we, should we like create it in Excel specifically or can we use no, like- You can use any format. Doesn't okay. Yeah. No, Thank you. Doesn't have to be Excel or any program is fine as, because I'm not, I will not see which program you use. You, you are going to paste the graph on the, on your, um, 
either you as a word file or whatever things you know you can take a screenshot of that and okay thank you. you the graph has to have again same thing you got to have x axis you have to tell what is the x axis you got to tell what is the y axis you got to have units there uh, so otherwise there is no meaning right so you got to write all that factors out you can just show that this is a graph you know that's it i have to know what is the x axis y axis what's the range all that stuff We just have one graph question, so okay, just one, two point or three points. So, not many. Basically, to do all the homeworks, all the homeworks, and you um, uh, know the concept, you should get one hundred percent. There is no reason to be. As I said, I'm not testing you for, like you know, here it's all. This should help you for your project. You now that's all it. I care about you now, so I. I'm more critical about concept. Whether you, if if you let's say, ask you know you add compost and this contaminant is going to remove more or less. If you say it's not going to remove, then it's a it's an understanding problem. That's where you lose point, not the other thing. Because that's where you know this retardation factor is related to organic. Okay, so as long as you show those understanding of the concept, you will get most of the points. Okay, I, again, I just don't want to extend this uh, midterm uh, trauma for a lot of people because I think it's uh, exams is always difficult for you know as a students I didn't really I enjoy exams but um, not because I I you know I, I from the beginning I don't really care about grades you know my grades are not good in the grad school right now and I'm here you know so this is just I want you to focus but uh, focus on learning okay. So one bad one bad day cannot define your career ever, uh, so it's, it doesn't help to take stress for the exams. You know, I'm, my exams should not be cause of stress, partly because this is the way this class is designed. You learn a lot in the in the project, and I think you know you all have done well in the quiz. So that gives me indication that you understand the concept. So that's all. The homeworks are right there in front of you, so you know the concept. Just to another questions. Will we be able to review our quiz, Rick? So the reason I didn't, uh, what I'll do is I'll release the answers so that you can see because there are some students who have health issues, they could not take the quiz, so that's why I didn't release the solution. So what I'll do is. I release the solution so that you know what's the wrong right answers. Okay, um, but don't share the questions with anybody else because there are still some students who, who has not who have not taken the quiz. Okay, and you can obviously ask question why that question was wrong. I'll answer even in the middle of the exam, so that's fine because that's already you took. I will not test you for the same thing twice. Okay. All right. I, I guess you know. If you have any questions, send me a question by campus where you know it should not be nice. So you should not uh, just prepare well and take exams whenever you are free. Don't be stressed out. You have forty-eight hours. Okay. I mean, I would say that take the exam in the next Thursday. There is no class. I know. Just prepare, 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 and just take it on Thursday so that. Uh, you by the time uh, many students who are taken earlier, they have to ask questions. It's always benefit you uh, if somebody take earlier. Um, but that Thursdays intend to take the exam. Thursday four to six, four to seven, take the exams. I'm done with it. Okay. Next Thursday. All right. So next class no exam, and see you on on. On Tuesday, and then I'm I'm really excited about the next class, next two weeks, because we'll work with you for the projects. That's where I enjoy the most, because you come up with different ideas. So that's the best part of the class. Okay, and this is a so just let's get out of this exam mode very quickly. Okay. All right, see you all. Good luck again. Thank Bye. You.